What's up guys? So yesterday I made the comment that you should be able to barbell row as much as you can bench press. And I wasn't only talking about volume, I was also talking about weight. So if you can bench 300 pounds, I think you should be able to row 300 pounds. And if you can't, then that shows muscular imbalance, which is probably hurting your bench press and really hindering your upper back. And yes, arm development for those of you who want bigger arms. But the surprising part about this for me was that I got a bunch of questions about how to perform a barbell row correctly. Don't overcomplicate this. The same way when someone asks, what is better, a decline bench, an incline bench, or a flat bench, or a dumbbell bench? Yes. The answer is yes. It's the same thing with the barbell row. So there's going to be different angles with your back. Some people like to be more upright and row to their belly button. Some people like to be bent way over like a pen lay row and row to like their bottom of their chest kind of area. Do them all. But I'm just going to take a couple seconds to show you guys how I like to perform barbell rows. And before I get asked a question, I am down for straps on barbell rows. I'm not down for straps on deadlifts. I am not down for straps on farmer's carries. I'm not down for straps on most things. However, on barbell rows, I do feel like as it gets heavier, you're not going to be able to double overhand grip it because as that bar is coming down and you try to catch it with a double overhand grip, it doesn't end well. I also think using straps helps you focus more on your back instead of just worrying about losing the bar with your grip. However, if you're doing other grip training things like axle deadlifts, regular deadlifts that are heavy, rack pulls, farmer's walks, anything else that you're using your grip, that strength isn't going to disappear because you use straps on barbell rows. But again, that's only on your heavier sets. Alright guys, so really basic stuff. For me personally on the barbell row, I like to keep my feet right underneath my shoulders and then I set my grip at the same distance as I do for my regular bench press. I'm always going to choose to take the barbell out of the rack if I can because I like to get my breathing and my bracing down before I am under load. So I'm getting my breath up top here, then hinging at my hips, bringing the bar down to right below my kneecap and rowing up. If you have to deadlift the bar from the ground, that's not a big deal. Just make sure you finish your first rep completely, get your breath, and then start your hinge before your rows begin. And then right here, I'm just showing you a couple different variations of the row with different back angles to show you what different people might do and I don't think any of them are particularly wrong. It's kind of like everyone's going to bring the bar down to a different position on their chest on the bench press. Same thing here. Different things for different people. The biggest things you want to take away are get your bracing up top, squeeze the bar as hard as you can, and try to keep your elbows tucked as you row. Keep them in the same position as you would when you're performing a bench press, and always keep the bar over top of the middle of your foot. Do not let it float out in front of your knees. All right, so now hopefully you guys have a better idea how I like to perform barbell rows and have a couple tips to walk away with that you didn't have before the beginning of the video. Now I'm gonna apply all this to my own workout, so let's go. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, I like to do all my strength work in giant sets. And where this originally came from way back in the day, not only did I wanna to switch to total body training, but in a commercial gym before I owned my own place, which you're seeing here, I didn't have a ton of room. So I would set up a barbell on a bench and I'd perform bent over rows. And then I'd flip over, hit the bench for the same amount reps, same amount weight. And then between, I always do an ab variation. And the reason why is not only do I want to be working my core so that I'm strong on my squats and my deadlifts, but it builds in an automatic rest period. A lot of times I'll get super excited or super anxious before really heavy sets and I'll have the tendency to just want to get them over with. But when I would do that, my results typically weren't where I wanted them to be. So putting in the ab variations always kind of builds in my rest. That's why you guys always see me doing it. Plus, I don't want to spend 20 minutes at the end of my workout just working my abs. That is way too boring for my puppy brain, so I just get them done as I go. So when I'm setting up these giant sets, I always try to throw in an antagonistic muscle group. So for my main mover, which will be my bench press, I'm always going to do a pulling motion in the same plane. So if it was an overhead press, I'd be doing a pull up. Since it is a bench press, I'm doing a row because it's both on the horizontal plane. I try to keep the weights exactly the same between the two. And I always perform my pulling motions before my pressing motions because I really think it aids in shoulder health as well as I think it helps my performance. If I row before I bench, I typically bench better. If I do not, it kind of is too much of a shock on my shoulders and my chest. So I always choose to row first because I get better that way. I know some people worry about the rows tiring them out before they perform their bench press, but it really doesn't happen, not in my experience. If anything, it kind of solidifies the foundation that you're going to be doing your pressing against. 
All right guys, so hopefully you have a couple more ideas of how to improve your barbell rows. You guys saw me using straps. I usually throw them on about 315 and then work my way up from there. If you can double overhand barbell row anything above 365 without straps, you get an internet high five. You guys see me using a little bit of body English on my sets and I don't think anything's wrong with that. I would actually encourage you to do so. If you're training for any type of strength sport, you're using your entire body movement for every single thing that you're doing. I wouldn't change that for rows. I think there is a place for very strict formal rows, but you guys saw a couple videos ago where I was doing those seal rows, where I was laying on a bench and really couldn't use body English at all. I would rather see you use a little bit of body English with them reasoned as long as you're safe to move more weight than I would you be super strict and be rowing 95 pounds. 95 pounds isn't gonna create the stimulus that you're hoping to get. Doing rows not only will build your upper back and your traps and your biceps, it's also gonna make your bench go up, it's gonna make your overhead press go up, it's gonna make your deadlift go up. Those are all good things. They'll fix your posture, especially with everyone all hunched over typing and playing on their phones, you're constantly in this position. In order to combat the eight hours a day that you're spending doing that, throw on some barbell rows. I hope you guys found this helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Go out, do something awesome with your lives, and I will catch up with you later in the week.